Hello everybody, welcome back to another Quick Games video, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to turn your tree generator from this to this. So you can see we have random terrain generation, the trees and plants are spawning accordingly, and they're all good. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is since of course we're doing random terrain, we don't want this flat, empty terrain. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete this, and I am using the Bracky's uh, random terrain generation script. So here I am using the Bracky's random terrain generation script. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for to his video where he codes the script and uh, walks you through what it all means. Um, but I'm just going to be using this code, and you don't have to use Bracky's code and everything. All you need to know is um, all the vertices. So make sure you have an array of vertices. And um, let me just show you how to put this in. So I just create an empty game object. We'll just call this random terrain. And we put our terrain generator script on, and then a mesh render. Put a terrain material on, and we click go, or we click the play button. And um, you can see here we have some wavy, nice terrain. Um, I might turn off, turn down. All right, that looks better for the material. Um, yeah, here let me let me center this, and then make this 100 by 100. All right. And now, we have this, and this is our terrain. So let's first get the trees in order, because they are, um, um, let me fix the code really quick. So here, this is the code we, la we wrote in the um, other tutorial, the last tutorial, where we made a random t tree generator. The problem with this, though, is the y value is zero, it's just static zero. So it's always going to spawn on the exact same y plane. Um, so that's obviously a problem. Also, I do need to change the um, x and y values to fit with the random terrain generation. So for the random terrain generations, it's going to be zero and 100. Uh, you know, I'll do 99. Zero, ninety-nine, okay, and this will do its thing and play. All right, so here we are. Um, we still have the issue where they're spawning off, but um, you can see there's a lot of issues with this because they're all spawning under the ground. You know, like. The ground, like the ground, is all wavy and everything, but the trees are just spawning on the same plane. So this becomes way more of an issue when you start to get into really hilly terrains, right? If you get a really, really hilly terrain, um, you're just gonna start to not even see the tree trees because there's they're gonna be either clipping under the ground or clipping over the ground like a bunch. So you'll have floating trees everywhere. So um, to fix this, it's relatively easy. So we go into the code and we are going to organize this a little better because it's not very good to have this in the void start method. So we'll just make void create trees. We'll make this public. Void create trees. Okay. And we're going to cut this into here. And in fact, we're not even going to use the void start. And I'll tell you why in a little bit, because we are going to be pretty much doing everything in this terrain generator. We're going to be calling this stuff from our terrain gener generator. That's why we're making this public. So yeah, first thing we need to do is, is get our vertices from here. So that's uh, easy to do. We just need to make a reference to our terrain generator, public terrain generator, we'll call it terrain generator, 
this is our reference, and um, make sure that this vertices variable is public. I have already made it public, but if you copy and paste it from Bracky's tutorial, it will be like that. So these vertices need to be public. All right. So now what we can do is we can make a list. And this might not be the best thing to do, but it's what we're doing now. We're going to make a list of vector 3s called vertices. And it might get confusing with all the vertices variables, but just know this is our local variable vertices, and this is the one, um, these are the ones that are like with the train generator. So then what we need to do is we need to set our local vertices into our to this vertices. So we need to say vertices equals terrain generator dot vertices. But this won't work because um, you know it's not giving an error, but it's just because my IntelliSense is screwed up. But um, this is just an array, and this is a list. So we can't do that. We can't just set it equal. So what we need to do is say um, using system dot link I don't know how to say that and um, then we can just say to list and this will convert that to a list so now what we need to do is is get a random vertice um, from this list okay so basically to explain what I'm doing is so we're just generating like between like a random number between 0 and 99 right um, with random terrain it's like a little different you want to like spawn the trees on a vertice on the land so let me show you what I mean so each one of these little waves has a bunch of vertices that make it up so um, we want to spawn a tree on a specific vertice so that um, it will have the correct height values. So you can see like we would want it to spawn right at that hill, like at the climax, climax of that hill or maybe down there. It's kind of hard to see with the material, but you know what I mean, right? We want to spawn it on top of the land and not under. And um, we can't do that with the way we're spawning right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a um, a local vector three called vertice. This will just be our vertice, and we'll make it equal to vertices and random random dot range and then zero. So we're getting a number between zero and then vertices dot count. Okay, so let me say, let me teach you what this means, all right? So we're getting a single, we're getting a random vertice in this entire array. Okay, so like we have all these vertices, right? And um, that's our land vertices. And we are just going to get a random vertice in this entire array. And that's how we're going to be spawning. So then what we need to do is in here, we know we just need to um, instead of saying random dot range, we're gonna say vertice dot x, and then for the y, it's gonna be vertice dot y, and then for this, it'll be vertice dot z. Okay, so now let's see what this looks like. Okay, so now we have to assign our references. Um, in our tree generator, we're just gonna pass in our tree generator. All right, let's play. And we see nothing. Ah, because I am a dummy and forgot to call the function. Classic programmer problem. All right. So basically, where we want to call this function is right after it's done generating the vertices. So this is the for loop that generates the vertices. So we'll just call the function right here. So we need another reference to our tree generator. So we just say tree generator, tree generator. Okay, and then after the for loop, say tree generator um, dot create trees. All right, now this should work. Okay, so we go to um, random terrain, and we pass in our tree generator. There we go.
And look at that. We have our trees spawning above the land now. And um, this looks pretty good. There's a couple things. Um, time to time you might see it a kind of like going above the ground. So that's, that's not too big of a deal. We can just um, say in our tree generator, maybe minus it. Minus the Y position, maybe 0 0.1. And that should fix that issue where it's floating above the ground. That's um, what we should do. Okay. And now, this looks pretty good. And we'll get rid of our dumb placeholder tree, just so we can measure out the dimensions of our stuff. So here we go. This looks pretty nice. And um, now I'm going to teach you how to bring in um, more objects. So this is pretty easy to do as well. It's mostly just a matter of copying and pasting. So basically the way we're going to do this, there's two different ways you could do this. You could either copy and paste this function like every time you want to create a different object. Or you could make this function a little bit more portable. And, because, like, let's say you just want to spawn trees, a bush, and some grass, right? That's really easy to do. You just copy and paste the function three times, and boom, you're done. Um, but the issue comes when you're doing a huge survival game, right? It's like, really, really big, large scale, and you have 50 objects you want to spawn randomly. It's just not practical to copy and paste this function... 50 times, it's just like not gonna work. Um, since we're just doing like a couple objects and this video is really just to show you like how to do it, um, I'm gonna do it the not so good way of copying and pasting it, but it's not hard to make one single function called like create land wildlife or something like that, Maybe create wildlife function and then have some if statements or maybe a switch statement and make this a single function that generates all the wildlife in your world. But I'm not going to do that here because it's going to take too long for just making plants. So let's do this. All right. Create trees. Um, let's do maybe create. I know I have a bamboo model with this asset pack, so maybe bamboo. Create uh, some grass. Right now, uh, create plant. All right. So now we have to go through the tedious thing of maybe just copy and pasting this. We'll do bamboo object. And um, plant object. We'll do this. Um, you know, I think I'm just gonna do a single game object to put all our stuff in. So instead of trees in world, we're just gonna do objects in world. I don't know. And we'll do this objects in world. And we'll do that and reassign the reference because I know that's gonna break. Yep. All right. Um, Trees in world object. We need to rename that to objects in world. There we go. Oh, I need to save that. <laughs> okay. So we resign the reference, and this is me just basically like going and copying and pasting stuff. It's really not not too interesting. Object. In world. Okay. So um. We'll go ahead and um, say public and um, bamboo amount and public and plant amount because obviously you want different amounts. Like you would want way more plants than trees, right? Um, you don't want it to be the same. We'll copy this. This will be 
Okay, so this is pretty much just changing the variable names at this point. It's really boring, but I'm assuming, you know, like the very basics of um, C sharp. So I'm not going to go through the very boring process of doing this on camera. So I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so I have renamed all the stuff. So now this is all bamboo and not trees, and this is all plants. So we can go ahead and do this. And now we will have this. So tree amount will be 50, bamboo amount will have 150, plant amount maybe 500. We could probably do a little more, but I don't care. And then let's drag in some bamboo. Okay, so now we get our models, so we'll do bamboo. Make sure we scale that down because for some reason it's insanely large. 0.1, and then what was our last one? Plants, um, tropical plant. Ones. And see, um, you don't have to have these objects just like sitting here. Like, you know, like they're not really doing anything, it's just the like sign references, right? You just uh, put the bamboo, you put the plant, right? And um, that's that. But you could, of course, do it, assign the reference directly from here. Put it right there. The issue with that is that the scale is messed up for these models. That's a model specific thing, so if you don't have the weird scale, then you could just do it directly from here. Or if you do have the scale problem, you could change the scale in code. I'm just going to be doing this simplified way. And I did accidentally set the objects in the world. Damn. Alright. Oh. Yeah, we forgot to call the functions. That's not that big of a deal. Just do that. Uh, create bamboo. Create plant. Alright. So now we should have that. And there we go. Um, we have all our plants. Let me disable these. And look at that. Now we have a pretty nice land. It's um, very diverse. You know, it's random generated land. It looks really nice. So thank you guys for watching. Um, this was just me making our tree generator a little more advanced. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.